what's happening. So many people. So what happens here is on weekends, I think from 12 or so, they close down these, this main street um, and only, so only pedestrians can walk here. Yeah. And it's kind of cool cause um, this is, I would say, so this is actually kind of like Fifth Avenue of Japan. Mm, okay. um, so what happens yeah. here is like all these big shopping places yeah. um, and everyone just comes here and shops. And so what happens is I like this area because um, there's a bunch of tourists, but also there's kind of like nice looking elderly people mm. kind of just like see like kind of just like strolling around and, and there's kids. And rich kids. Yeah, exactly <laughs> um, And then you know like well-dressed kids because their parents want them to look you know dress well mm. while they're in Japan or something Why? Doesn't like to face me. Oh, there's two. <laughs> we would never know if it's actually his or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, <laughs> we came to for the uh, in the best time. Yeah, I think so. If, if they were just like standing, uh, sitting there, it would be boring. That's right? kind of boring. You're right. You're right. If you're taking the photo just because they are, so to say, handicapped, then I would say that's probably not a good thing. I don't know. I really like the emotions that they have and that they're having yeah. a nice time. Not because they're handicapped, but because they're different. Um, like, I, I like things that are different, you know? See, like, he's doing, like, a wheelie to take the photo, so that's, a, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's Japan. Always have some kind of old person telling, <laughs> telling you how to live your life. <laughs> Just <joking. laughs> I try to not care too much about what I take, actually. It's just like, I, I like the feeling of not, and I usually scan them like a week or week or two late, like, or two weeks later. Um, I kind of like the feeling of just scanning a roll and not having any like preconceptions. Um, Can you show us your camera? I'm oh yeah. I'm going to yeah. stop you here. My setup. Oh yeah, yeah. My, my setup. <laughs> yeah. I haven't been shooting for a, like a bunch of years, but still like I've gone through so many cameras, it's insane. Like I've shot with like Contax, like con, like Contax G2s, mm. oh, and um, I Contax. I have the Contax. Yeah, looks. right. I have the Contax T2. I've sh like shot with like Nikon F3s and different digital cameras, mm. like a bunch of Fuji, a bunch of Fujis, yeah. and like um, what else? I have the Leica M9, which I still use. But yeah. then like ultimately, I just like everything like is resolved in a Leica, um, which is why I ended up selling just like everything that I had. Okay, so you have nothing anymore, just this camera? Now I ended up having like some other cameras. Like yeah. I, I have the M9 mm -hmm. and I still have a Fuji with me. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, um, everything I'm just fine with this. Like I've had issues with like Contax G2s where it's like, mm -hmm. oh the frame, like this isn't actually a rangefinder, or it's like the frame lines change and like that kind of pissed me off. <laughs> and then just like all these little things that I ended up um, caring about that fit, all fit in the Leica, I guess. And it's super fast, like I I shot on like Fuji X-Pro 2s and what, yeah. I have the X-C3, but on the street, 
I don't know, I just got used to it. It's just so fast. It's very intuitive. Yeah, it's like, I think one of the biggest reasons why I wanted this is because, well, all Leica lenses has, what do you call it? The, the focus tab and the distance thingy. Mm -hmm. um, so are you shooting uh, with zone focusing? Pretty much zone focusing. Today, it's, <laughs> it's kind of dark, yeah. so it's not letting me do what I like to do, but mm -hmm. I kind of do it, um, it's like a ripoff of what Matt Stewart does. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, he does hyperfocal where it's like he sets it f11 and then he goes to like three meters which is like his middle distance mm. and then when people get close to him he snaps to like one meter which is pretty much what i do but i like and we also talked about this like before where it's like in tokyo it's really there's a lot of shadow and there's also harsh sunlight too but then it's mostly a lot of shadow so i actually shoot usually at f8 or sometimes 5.6 but I still keep the focus distance to um, three meters or one meter when people get close to me. Mm. So it's kind of like zone, it's basically ended up being a zone focus thing rather than hyper hyperfocal. So it's like yeah. rip off hyperfocal, <laughs> which is what I do, yeah. Okay. And uh, 35. Yeah, 35, okay. yeah. Also, yeah, just the Leica thing mm. too, I ended up liking is how quiet the shutter is. Mm. Um, I never knew this until I actually got one but it's helped me so much. Um, people really don't care about the shutter sound. Like the M9 is super loud. <laughs> I've taken shots with the M9 and people got pissed off at me for it because they heard like the ring sound. Uh, yeah, but I've never gotten anyone get close to me or like t even talk to me when I've taken shots with, of them with the M6. Um, maybe it has no, Maybe there's no relativity to that, but I feel like there is. Okay. Yeah, I, I personally wish that I had like a distance scale here. Right? Yeah. It's so, if the it's Fuji had a distance scale, yeah. yo, that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be <laughs> so nice. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let, let's talk about the thing you told me that um, you think that uh, Japan is a bit overrated for street photography. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess. that might piss some people off, but I also think it's, if you're local, you kind of see that. It's kind of true, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. yeah. So, but why do you think it's overrated? There's just so many aspects to that, where it's like, um, some things that you notice, for example, where it's, people have, don't actually have too much emotion while, like, in public in Japan, which is... Do you see public. no couples kissing or hugging? No, it's no, never, never. Only in, in secret. It's, yeah, it's, it's very secretive. Because, um, yeah, there's this thing about um, some, like, do's and don'ts in public, I think. Um, people really stick to that. Um, so there's very, it's hard, well, it's not, I wouldn't say very little, but it's hard to find those little emotional um, circumstances or little things that go on on the streets. It doesn't really happen too much. Um, some other things, like, as I said, like, there's, to be honest, the, light, the lighting in Tokyo is shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, the government really didn't care about like the coordination of sunlight and how buildings block sunlight. <laughs> they obviously didn't have that in mind um, when they're building the city. So <laughs> what happens is you have a lot of rarely, rarely see uh, light hitting the street. It's <laughs> like, yeah. Always like uh, another building or yeah, 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 yeah. It's either harsh shadow or harsh, really harsh sunlight. Yeah, in um, summer you have like harsh uh, light from above you. Yeah, yeah. So like what happens is like this place is just like glowing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like white. The whole place is just a, basically a sun, reflection of the sun. Um, so there's not many interesting um, like patterns to light. So like layering, for example, is really hard. Um, sorry, the type of layering I'm talking about is kind of like the Alex Webb thing where it's like you have different silhouettes and shadows as well. Exactly. And then like the foreground might have like a shadow or like like a foreground shadow and then the the background might have some like spotlight kind of thing happening. That pretty much never happens here. Um, another thing is the colors are just chaotic. Um, there's no... That's why probably most photographers here shoot black and white. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And too noisy. Yeah, and it's like like, if you can name, like, famous color street photographers in Japan, like, please do. Like, I don't know very many. And there's probably a reason for that. It just, like, black and white just makes so much sense um, in Tokyo, I think. It just makes much more sense. Um, which is why I'm kind of challenging myself to take 
uh, more color, and that's kind of why I've resorted to color film. Mm. Um, it's, it's just the colors are better in general, and then the film itself is kind of like a color palette. Um, so I think, I think it kind of suits it if you do it well enough. I think, and I'm trying to get to that point. Yeah. Is this the end? <laughs> it's pretty much the end. Yeah. Uh, Actually, might get an umbrella. It's mm. raining a lot. Well, when did you start doing street photography? Yeah, good question. Um, I actually started um, taking a bunch of portraits before, because um, I was into like fashion modeling, and then it's like there's a bunch of people around me, and then you know why not take photos of them, right? So you started because you have like good-looking people around you, Basically, and then started yeah. photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but I got into just photography as an art form more. Um, and I really liked film. Like I liked Jürgen Teller, and then he used film. And then I was like, okay, okay, I might try it. And then I ended up, I don't know, I just wanted to take more photos and I just ended up walking around more. And then, and then I started studying, it's like, so how do I take photos while I'm just like strolling around? Which ended up being like a street photography thing, right? And then you start looking at like Henri Cartier-Bresson and then all these like, and I loved Elliot Erwitt. And so you looked at the, uh, the legends that everyone knows and yeah. first and... Yeah, and then it's like, holy crap, like I didn't know such a world existed. Oh, yeah. And then I have a very like sporty background, so I'm fine with just like walking around the whole day and kind of like sucking it up, I guess. Yeah. And then, but also like, I really like design in general, um, and I didn't know that there's like concepts like composition and color composition, yeah. and then I kind of loved it because I kind of geeky at the same time. So it's just like, like I could really get into this, and then I started studying more, studying more, and then like shooting and studying and continuing doing that. I had a bunch of friends that took photos of me a while back. But then I got too geeky for them, so they all just kind of like backed out. <laughs> ended up by myself. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's kind of like the story for everyone though. And who do you look up to now? Who are your favorite photographers? Yeah, I have a couple. I have a couple and it honestly, it depends on how I feel. Yeah. But I think cons like consecutively, I've really liked Matt Stewart. Um, I really like his work. I really like him um, and his style of shooting. It's very, like, it's very contemporary, I think, but, but at the same time, it, I think it also fits the style. Of, you can kind of do that in Tokyo, too. It's a bit hard, but you can still kind of um, get that kind of vibe going on. Um, and I've learned so much from his style of shooting, too. Um, and it's just brilliant. The first time you see it, it's just like, just like mind blowing. It's like, and he's super charismatic, like, I, I cannot imagine someone like freaking out because he takes your picture. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? Um, so Matt Stewart, definitely. Um, in terms of like book sequence, I do love Alex Webb. Um, his oh, yeah, book... Me too. I, I absolutely love his <laughs> Yeah, like The Suffering of Light is probably like the best book yeah. book. But it's super expensive. Oh, I'm crazy, man. Yeah. I got it as like a present to myself like a couple months ago. But I, I don't regret it though. It is an amazing book. Yeah, it's an amazing book. But no, like I love a bunch of photographers. Like in terms of like Instagram, I, as I said, I love like Aaron Berger. Berger? I, I, sorry, I don't know how to press it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Amazing photos. Um, and classically, yeah, I love Elliot. I also love um, Gary Winogrand. Um, his philosophies to photography are just amazing so when I feel down I listen to some of his like some of his like very limited like words on YouTube um, of his like old footage yeah it's really inspiring did you see his um, the TV show he was like a guest on a TV show the 30 minute interview yeah. with the TV yeah yeah why don't we have time. this anymore <laughs> like street photographers going right? on TV live we need that more it's we need the thing is like we need that kind of people on it too. The spreading the word of yeah. photography more as an art form mm -hmm. as compared to something that's just like a contemporary media form, you know? Yeah. Like Yeah, I feel like we, we more and more become like the underdogs or the you know, it, it's we're always in the gray zone, like people hate us or love us. Mm -hmm. It's I don't know. Yeah, no, you're totally right about that. 
I think it's so important to, if you really pursue street photography, to also uh, be aware of how you, um, how do I say, how you will be perceived, mm -hmm. like perceived in the in the public. Like, for example, of course, don't be an asshole and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how people see me though sometimes, because um, I'm not like 100% Japanese too. Same time, so I just wonder how. Like, if, sometimes I think people do think I'm a tourist. <laughs> sometimes I do get like a free That's pass. Good, It's sometimes good, but sometimes like I don't. It at the same time kind of feels like cheating. Um, sometimes I don't like it, I guess, in that sense. But you have both options. You can approach people like in Japanese or respond in Japanese. Yeah, I can. At the same time, you can, you know, uh, pretend like you're being a tourist. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I do it also all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like thank you or sorry or thumbs up, and then all these choices. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is pretty interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see. That's <laughs> hi there. This this probably has more megapixels than whatever I'm shooting with right here, anyways. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of cool. Can't take pictures though. Yeah. <laughs> I can't take pictures. It's cool, but you can't take pictures. <laughs> What I sometimes might do is like when I take a photo, like I won't. I guess everyone does this anyways, but like I won't like lower the camera. So like even if I take it here, then it kind of looks like you're focusing like far away, and the M6 being so silent, like people wouldn't know that you actually took the shot. This is what Gary Winogrand does, I guess. He kind of like takes it and kind of lowers it, and he just keeps on like getting yeah. it back to his eye. He kind of acts as like this awkward old man with a camera. Yeah. He probably is, but I think it's an act. Yeah, I love it though. I love it. <laughs> Those colors. Sometimes that kind of color stuff might spontaneously happen. Yeah. I think in Japan, color—it's <laughs> just to show the reality of the color. Not—it's not for any sake. As in, like you're not. To be honest, I don't think you're getting much out of the color. But still, like color is still a reality. And then, yeah. like here, we have so much yellow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you can still kind of do this kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, it's really chaotic, but that's the that's the fun part, though. Like, out of this chaos, like sometimes you can find these patterns, um, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Um, Let me ask you, what what do you look for uh, on the street? Yeah, like, yeah. What is what you are drawn to? Great question. Um, I think. Yeah, just like what we talked about right now. Like sometimes I might look for these color patterns, um, but usually, to be honest, they don't work in Tokyo. Um, so usually, I think there's a couple of things. Um, definitely, good color is one of them. Just because like good color obviously stands out out of all these chaotic, <laughs> like weird noisy colors in Japan. Um, but also, I think um, yeah, definitely emotion is one of them. Um, as I think <laughs> also emotion in the colors you um, see. I think more in the subject um, or the people that I'm taking. Like as we explained, like there's very little of that in Tokyo, yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of why I guess I look for it. It's I kind of want to sorry, it's kind of want to like hope that there is some on the streets, yeah. and sometimes I do find it, and then they're really just like really spontaneous, and they're really just like one moment. Yeah. Um, so it really takes a lot of <laughs> um, technique, I think, too, just to um, just to get it right. Yeah, I noticed on your Instagram, like your photos are often like a, a wider scene of something, mm -hmm. and I know exactly what you were drawn to because <laughs> uh -huh. it sticks out a bit. And I was like, ah, it's probably this what interests you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks for mentioning that. At the same time, like I don't want to make it just that, mm -hmm. um, uh, which is probably why a lot of my photos are very crowded. I think there's a lot of things happening. But at the same time, I kind of like that. Um, I like 
that it's just it's not just one aspect of the photo that you can look at. Yeah. Um, I like photos that are kind of like complex and you can look at and never like you never get bored of it. Um, like I think Joel Marowitz, for example, does that really well, mm. and he's one of my heroes too, I guess. Yeah. But I just I, that's one of like my goals as a photographer. Yeah, it's super interesting uh, to see this work where he. Uh, you know, took a few steps back to show everything yeah. and try to like include as much as he can. Mm -hmm. But it, it looks, it doesn't look so chaotic. It's, yeah. It's like he placed some puppets, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, as you said, it's kind of like, um, there's obviously something that he's drawn to. Yeah. Maybe me too. Um, but at the same time, trying to get more and more out of the scene. But <laughs> As hard as it is, like at the same time, like composing it well, and that still is yeah. a big part of it. Um, and then maybe getting some color out of it, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think there's just so many photographers now that like, like anyone can take photo a photo of like an interesting thing that's happening. But it's there's still I think a limited amount of people that can compose it well. Um, and get different aspects in it. Oh, this is the first Christmas market in, in Tokyo that, that I saw. Me too. Yeah? Me too. Let's, let's dive in. Ancient SF20. I don't think they sell these anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not the best. <laughs> Oh, it looks like a portrait. It, it looks like Martin Parr took it. <laughs> And then I think I was checking like what like film simulations people use and things like that. And then you had a bunch of videos on the X100. So I was like, hey, cool. And then I looked at you and it's like, huh, he actually kind of looks Japanese. <laughs> and it's like, I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm dreaming. Maybe I'm seeing things. Yeah, a lot of people only realized this after the uh, Tatsuo Zutuki. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then, no, 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 yeah, and then I started, I, I saw you because Tatsu, I think Tatsu mentioned you or something, and then I looked at your Instagram, it's like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, shit, yeah, you're right, and then, and then I was like, hey, I was right, <laughs> he's, he's Japanese, he's speaking Japanese here, and it's like, hey, you're right, it's like, hey, I know this guy, he's, he's the guy that, yeah. And I don't remember how I came across you. Probably on Instagram, but I don't know how. I maybe because you were connected to all the boy Tokyo. I guess clubs. so. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And seen. probably because I saw you are like half Japanese, so <laughs> I always need to connect to always other need halves. Oh, yeah. Missed it. Yeah. What, what do you think about? photographing children I so actually my my like I have like an office job and what I do is I, I do consulting for sustainability which actually includes like sustainability like environment and social issues and I do that for companies and so within that realm actually like children have specific rights to like meet for like media exposure for example and they have, they have specific rights for that, um, which is different from adults, actually. Um, in that sense, not good. But, <laughs> however, however, though, um, for photography, I have a different point of view, I think. Um, well, again, like for street photos, like the, th the, the issue is like, what, what's the subject they're taking? Oh. And I think, sorry, in Japan, um, the law is that um, if you're not, 
unless they can prove that you're taking a specific photo of someone to portray them in like a wrong yeah. fashion, I, I guess, then that starts to infringe their rights. But if not, then technically it's okay. Um, yeah, we so, have something uh, similar in Germany. Uh -huh. But uh, in general, not only for children, but... Yeah, for everyone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think um, in Japan, specifically the law, is n there's nothing uh, specifically for children, if that's what I know. In terms of like, again, in terms of like international human rights and children's rights, maybe it's not a good thing, but they, you don't have their name attached to the photo as well, yeah. um, in that sense. <laughs> Yeah, so you but still do it. I still do it. Yeah, <laughs> but like we uh, talked about earlier, it's about the intent. You have the right intent. Exactly. It's about. I think it's about the intent. And, um, and I, most of the time, the parents <laughs> notice you, and yep. uh, at that moment, they could say like, "Oh, please don't take photographs of my ch uh, child," and I would totally say, "Okay, sorry, I will delete it and go." Mm -hmm. uh, on my way. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, if yeah. they say but something. They see me, they laugh, and then this is for me like an okay. Yeah. It's not, we don't mind. Like, yeah, like, usually I think, um, yeah, it happens to me a lot too, where it's like parents, they're having a great time with their kids, their kids are fucking around, and then they take a photo of it, and then they're like, this is good. It's all part of like this fun. Yeah. Um, so I feel like if there's that mutual connection, then it's definitely okay. Yeah, but kids are so fun in general yeah. too. Yeah, because the <laughs> adults are <coughs> too reserved, yeah. too like uh, careful about like how they express themselves, and too many people care too much yeah. like, how other people <laughs> think about uh, you. Hey, hey, like a store. Hi there. Like a store. Oh, like a store. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do they know you? It's like, hey, what's I, I, I think I've been here a couple of times. Maybe someone might know yeah. me. I've never actually bought something here, so maybe they hate me. I don't know. <laughs> it was so fun when I was in, in London. I went to the Leica store, and uh, when I left, the, the guy said, like, see you later. And I was like, why? Uh, because he knows someday I will come back. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, they know. No, they, they definitely know. <laughs> when I went to, I think, DC and I was taking photos, that's when I had the contact with you too. And then I was walking around taking photos and I saw like a store and it's like, oh, maybe, maybe I should, you know, take a look. Mm -hmm. I went in there and the store, the store guy like is super nice, talking about how great Leica's are and it's like, I understand it too. And it's like, I have the G2 and it's like, oh, g is a great camera too, yeah, 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 yeah. And his voice gets higher and higher. <laughs> And it's I'm like, excited. <laughs> it's like, however, though, <laughs> have you seen our Leicas? <laughs> it's like, yes. So it's like, yes, I have seen them. <laughs> Sounds like a Japanese uh, grandmother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I went back home, and I think a couple months later, I actually did get a Leica. So, <laughs> not because of that guy. I don't think so. However, um, I did end up getting a Leica though. I think Fujis are really good for like. Especially like the mirror or the window reflection shots, mm. they're really easy to get them because the controls are right there, and the exposure comp is really easy to access. Leicas aren't great for that. IMO. <laughs> Why not? Because um, exposure, it's it's because um, window window and mirror exposure are kind of tricky, mm -hmm. right? The lighting, mm. it's hard, kind of hard to nail that. But once mm. you get the lighting nailed, then you can focus. The good part about the Leica is you can either focus on the foreground or the background yeah um, and you have more control over that whereas to Fuji if you're an automatic hmm. um, it would focus on something that Fuji wants not you uh, okay um, I mean obviously you can control it manually later yeah but yeah. all right shut up and shoot okay <laughs> let's do that
bad. It's limiting because it's very dark. And so I'm just focusing. It's really hard to like F4 and focusing at like 2.5 meters. So that's why I go like that. It's to adjust the, adjust the focus. Um, and I kind of sometimes do the Winogrand thing where it's just like I tilt it. Um, Cause sometimes it's just too boring. So, um, and some of yeah, some of these like, I think, like, to show that it's bad weather and people are obviously kind of, kind of tired but kind of like moody at the same time. Um, kind of like this. And ah, oh, I like this one too. Some lady running through the cars and you kind of have the car light. Mm. Um, and she's obviously running with her umbrella and there's no one else in the shot. I kind of like it. Yeah. Awesome. Some things, some things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard though with an umbrella and yeah, it's really dark. Yeah, totally in the way. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> Name of the game, man. <laughs> so as a model, you get to yep. shoot a lot with other models. And are they yes. all your friends? Yeah, mostly my friends. Um, <coughs> some people are people that you know just contact me via some kind of social media platform, I guess, mm. um, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, they're mostly friends. And once I shoot them once, then usually we get along. Then. Might shoot him again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and have you ever thought about doing street style portraits? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you're kind of doing it already. Yeah, I right? kind of do. Um, so cool. usually, yeah. Like the thing is, the way I usually set up, like maybe like half a day of taking portraits mm -hmm. for the person, is I would have, because I'm again from more of like a passion background, I guess. So it's like mm -hmm. I. I know that I need to take photos of the person so that he or she can use it for a portfolio. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. So in that case, like we want to go through like a couple different types of clothing, right? Mm. Or a couple different types of backgrounds or environments. Yeah. So I would usually have like two or three locations in mind. Mm. And then when I'm walking, you know, when, when we're walking around them, I would still continue taking photos of the person in like different environments. So, mm. so in that sense, it's kind of like street portraits. I think you compared it to like um, Tatsuo-san, yeah. where it's like, um, if I'm getting this correct, he walks with the model and then like he takes it more as a street photo though. Mm. Whereas um, like maybe the lighting is good. So it's like, oh, if you, if you can stand there, then I could take a picture of this scene, whereas mm. for me it would be like, oh, you can stand there so that this looks good as a portrait, mm. rather to as like a scene itself. Yeah. Um, so I think when I take portraits, I'm more like portrait heavy. It's like I'm mm. getting, I'm trying to get a photo of this person that looks good. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to know um, if portrait photography <clears throat> influences your street photography. Uh, <clears throat> that's or the other way around, maybe. I think of that a lot by myself. Um, yeah. Whatever it is, uh, I think for a street, I'm definitely drawn into like clothing. You know? um, that's something that I can't. Uh, okay. I'll have to admit, like, um, if someone's wearing, or someone has a good atmosphere because of what they're wearing yeah. and the match with what they're wearing and the environment that they're in, mm. then I would definitely be, I would be drawn to it, and mm. I would take photos. So I think from that sense, yes, I think. But I don't. I I, I kind of think of them as different um, formats, though. Mm. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I guess that's it. Okay. So, so let's kind of some of this Thank stuff. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry um, I destroyed your voice. Yeah, no, uh, it's not your fault. <laughs> uh, you talk too much. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Bye bye. Uh,
Some people say, oh, I have no time at all because, you know, I work hard and I have family. But if you're going to work, you're taking a bus or going out to have lunch, there's always like photo possibilities. Yeah.